Ricky Gervais is currently under fire from the woke mob for making jokes about trans people in his latest comedy special on Netflix. Netflix recently laid off their diversity staff and issued a warning to their staff that if you don't like the content they make, you can leave. I'd like to go back in time, my friends. I'd like to go back in time to one of the first, if not the first, I could be wrong, original series Netflix ever produced, House of Cards. I remember when House of Cards came out and everyone loved it. And then later they learned bad things about Kevin Spacey and then nobody really wanted to watch it without him. Here was the idea. Netflix had all of these different shows from all of these different production companies and networks. They had all these different movies. And they could see what people liked, what had the highest engagement, what tended to play the best with a general audience. And so they said, well, people like political thrillers and people really like Kevin Spacey. So let's make a political thriller show with Kevin Spacey. And boom, House of Cards was an instant hit. For some reason, Netflix started to drift into wokeness, seemingly in defiance of their own metrics. Perhaps they were swallowing the refuse straight from Twitter, believing the woke garbage. Well, now they decided to put out this, this Netflix special with Ricky Gervais, and he has several jokes about the trans community and woke mobs. They're actually interesting points to be made. But of course, now they're threatening to cancel Ricky Gervais, who I'm sure doesn't care. Why did Netflix come out recently and say, if you don't like the content we make, you can leave? Perhaps it's because they knew they were going to release a Ricky Gervais comedy special. Perhaps over at Netflix, they're looking at their analytics and they're like, people like comedy, people like Ricky Gervais. Let's roll with it. And then Ricky says, here's the joke I'm going to do. And they go, "Ooh, oh, geez, what do we do? And they said, guys, people really like Ricky Gervais. But he's making jokes that are going to trigger the woke. We need to preempt this. Now they're laying off woke and diversity hires. Like the, the people who run the diversity stuff at Netflix are getting fired. Ricky Gervais is telling the jokes he wants to tell. So this is a very grand get woke, go broke. And perhaps we'll see the opposite, which would be like, I don't know, um, anti-woke, not broke or whatever. Get unwoke, get wealthy, I suppose. You know, it, it probably is better to say, get unwoke, be not broke, because there's no guarantee you're going to become rich off of making this content, but at the very least, people won't abandon your platform, right? Well, certainly many of the woke people are like, I'm canceling my subscription to Netflix, but you know what? Woke people make up a tiny fraction of this country. Stop pandering to people who don't buy your stuff. So we do have this story from uh, uh, Variety about Ricky Gervais, but let me just show you this stuff real quick. Netflix's woke purge. Troubled streaming giant's latest layoffs targeted staff who are among its most vocal social justice warriors. Ah, victory. It sounds so sweet. The cultists are losing. They are being gutted from Netflix. Good for you, Netflix. Maybe once you get rid of cuties, I'll agree to come on your platform or maybe Big Mouth. But, you know, I'm not just going to sit back and be like, oh, look, they made jokes about trans people. Look, I don't I don't care about directly insulting people. Right? I'm, I'm not in favor of that. I don't like it. You want to criticize an idea, I'm, I'm fine with it. You want to insult someone directly, I'm not fine with it. You want to criticize someone directly, I'm fine with it, but insulting them. Here's a story from Variety. Ricky Gervais's Netflix comedy special, Super Nature, has only been released on the streamer for a few hours, but it has already drawn criticism for a string of graphic and hurtful transphobic jokes. Ugh. Four minutes into the special, Gervais dives into material about the trans community seemingly calculated to draw controversy. Ah, bravo, good sir, Ricky Gervais. You have certainly courted Tim Pool into doing a segment on you and the things you have to say. Congratulations on the free press. Ricky says, oh, women, not all women. I mean, the old fashioned ones, the old fashioned women, the ones with wombs, those effing dinosaurs. I love the new women. They're great, aren't they? The new ones we've been seeing lately, the ones with beards and cocks. They're as good as gold. I love them. And now the old fashioned ones say, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. How about what about this person isn't a lady? Well, his let's 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 make it a little bit more family friendly. So we'll say, well, his privates, her privates, you effing big. OK, you know what? We're just going to go for it. YouTube's going to get mad at me. Well, his penis, her penis, you effing bigot. What if he. Man, this is this is brutal. Forces me. 
What if she forces you, you effing turf <laughs> man? Ricky Gervais went off, not for children. They say turf or trans exclusionary radical feminist feminist has been associated with people who reject the notion that trans women are women. A few minutes later, when discussing Kevin Hart, removing himself from hosting the Oscars in 2018 for past homophobic tweets, Gervais continued joking about the trans community. You can't predict what will be offensive in the future, Gervais said. You don't know who the dominant mob will be. Like, the worst thing you can say today, get you canceled on Twitter, death threats, the worst thing you can say today is women don't have penises, right? Now, no one saw that coming. You won't find a 10-year-old tweet saying women don't have penises. You know why? We didn't think we effing had to. Bravo, good sir. Toward the end of the special, Gervais offers his reasoning for trans jokes, saying, Full disclosure, in real life, of course, I support trans rights. I support all human rights. And trans rights are human rights. Live your best life. Use your preferred pronouns. Be the gender that you feel you are. But meet me halfway, ladies. Lose the cock. That's all I'm saying. Wow. Let me just say this. Ricky, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's fine if you want to point out logical inconsistencies. It's fine if you want to make jokes. I'm all for it. I agree with pointing out logical inconsistencies. But you can't do that and then come out and say, but this group is completely fine. Now, I, I guess I actually agree with Ricky to a certain degree. But I think you need to clarify this because I don't know what his final point is saying. Here's what I think. I think that uh, if you're a trans person, you should be able to live your life and you should you should be able to go get a job. You should be able to uh, you know go to a restaurant. People shouldn't throw you out for these things. But there is a challenge in where we draw the line. Businesses like to put up signs saying we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. There becomes an increasing challenge when you say you must provide public accommodation to everybody. Now, I've often been on the side of the, the, the baker in Colorado. He said to this, this gay couple that was getting married, you can have any cake you want, but I'm not writing your message. And that was the lawsuit. OK, my attitude is more like it's not your message. I understand if you don't want to perform a service, therein lies the challenge. You're, he's not saying he won't allow a certain race, identity or whatever into his rest, into his bakery. He's saying you can't make me take an action. And that's where things get really interesting. Now, this is a, this is a difficult moral issue because I feel like so long as we are in the system where people pay taxes to public accommodation and public spaces, you're occupying a public space and then denying someone for personal reasons, denying them a, a public accommodation. The challenge I have here is public space is finite. And if we give you that space that we protect with our police, with our fire departments, with our medical services, with our electrical services, with road repair and all of that stuff, everyone's paying into that. You get the space and then you say, I simply don't want you to, to, you know, come into like to, to get my services. There's a challenge there. <clears throat> There's a challenge there. This is one of the most difficult philosophical questions. The guy says, I'll write stuff for you. I won't write that. That's interesting. He wasn't denying them service. He was refusing to write a specific thing. Now, I think he could probably write it and say, it's their message, not mine. But that's a real challenge. When you go to someone and say, this is something you have to do if you want to run a business, Someone might just be like, no, nah, I won't do it. I won't run the business. It's tough. I don't have all the answers. So when I look at this, I'm like, yo, if I, if I, if I ran a bakery and someone came in, let me, let, let me put it this way. Here's, the, here's where the issue is. What if someone says that they are um, a child abuser and they said they want you to write that message and you're like, I won't do it. Do they get protected class? Now, of course, we might say like, no, 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 of course not. That, that's illegal. But you need to understand then who is getting the protection and why. Why did we decide that certain groups are worthy of protection and other groups are not? What about someone who think, who wants to advocate for removing the feet of all children? I mean, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a ridiculous idea, right? What if they're like, I want you to write on the cake, we should cut off the, the feet of children. You'd be like, I'm not writing that. That's insane. You have to. It is my beliefs. Now, you might say, that's absurd. No one's cutting off children's feet. Okay. What about their junk? What about someone who comes in and says, gender surgery for children? And someone says, I'm not writing that message. And they say, you have to, because we've decided that one is actually protected. 
Okay, so if a group advocates for the removing the feet of children, that's not protected, but the genitals is protected. You see, I, I don't understand why we would grant one right to one group and not the other. If we're saying you have to provide all services, then wh- where do you draw the line? And therein lies the challenge. Don't come to me for those answers because I ain't got them. I don't. I can understand like um, national origin, race, religion, and things like that. But therein lies the same issue as, as the slippery slope. And, uh, you know, Seamus Coughlin made a f- funny point on Tim Castarelli. He said, you know, that the left has proven it's not a slippery slope. It's a cliff and we've gone straight off the edge. And it's like, it's a good point. You go in and say, you need to write religious messaging. Someone could be Jewish and you'd be like, I want you to write, Jesus is my Lord and Savior on the cake. And they might be like, no, I won't do that. I don't believe that. And I refuse to write that. Someone else would need to write it. Would you force them to do it? I guess you have to. And therein lies the the bigger issue that we can look at religion and the average person on the left will be like, oh, just write the message, blah, blah, blah. Okay. if you can if if, uh, go to go to a bakery in Washington, D.C., run by liberals and tell them you want an American Nazi party cake and see what they say. Oh, but politics is a protected class in Washington, D.C. I have no idea how that would play out. But we see these people continually going to that bakery. And they're they're filing uh, you know lawsuit after lawsuit. There's like a someone went to him and said they wanted a gender uh, transition cake, and he said no. So then he got sued again. Okay, find a liberal in D.C. and make them write something negative about Muslims. Make them write something positive about violent dictators and authoritarian authoritarian right wingers. Heck, have them write we love Donald Trump. We will always love him. He is our God Emperor, and see what they say. And if they're in violation of that, ask them, do you agree with forcing businesses under these civil rights provisions to have to write these messages? I'd be willing to bet a lot of them are going to be like, I don't like this. Don't like it. I'm not going to pretend to have the answers, my friends. But here's my point. Ricky Gervais at the end says, I support trans rights. Yeah, what does that really mean? What does it mean? I don't I don't know how we actually deal with this anymore because of the rapid expansion of leftist protections. LGBTQ LGBTQIA2 P plus or whatever, IIA S P. There's so many. They've they've included uh, you know pansexual and sapiosexual and intersex and asex and two spirit and plus. So at what point do we be like, you can be a giraffe? And you can't be denied service. Like, at what point does a deer, like, walk in? And then they're just like, I have no idea what the deer wants, but I can't kick it out. There's actually a Supreme Court case, a New York Supreme Court case, about personhood for elephants. I am not saying this as a moral statement to deny anyone rights. I'm asking you, if we continually expand, at what point do we start and stop someone's access to these rights and these provisions? If the trans community will get the same rights as anyone else, meaning they can go into a baker and say, you must write a message, then what about in D.C. someone who is a Nazi? I don't like Nazis. Should they, should bakeries be forced to write that stuff? Man, I don't know. And if I'm going to say no to that, what about any other belief system someone doesn't like? Is the idea simply that most Americans don't like Nazis, so it just would not be upheld? But D.C. Sa- DC says politics is a protected class, so you could do it. I have no idea, man. Maybe we should film that video and see what these liberal bakeries in D.C. have to say when we are like, this is a protected class. You have to write these messages. And then what if you have them write messages that conflict with other protected classes? Like, what if you have them write something like from the Quran or, or um, the, what is it, the Hadith is it called? Opposing gay marriage. What if you tell them you want Leviticus, uh, the, the Leviticus passage from the Bible about men shall not, not lie with men? Now, who are you infringing upon? You must write it because it's a religion; it's protected. And then they can say, "Yeah, but it infringes, you know, upon gay rights or whatever." Yeah, but I'm not, so you're not infringing upon me. Figure it out. I got no idea. Anyway, everyone's freaking out about Ricky Gervais. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Netflix laid off 150 employees on Tuesday, many of whom were working on creating and promoting projects focused on marginalized communities. Firm additionally fired nearly 70 employees working for its social media and publishing teams. The struggling streaming giant claimed layoffs were carried out amid a slowdown in revenue and decline in subscribers. It's interesting. The first to go is wokeness. Why? My friends, meritocracy 
matters. Netflix wants something that works. They want a machine that makes them money. Wokeness, they assumed, probably would have. They were wrong. It would not have. Had they done any real research into what regular people care about and think, they would have not done this in the first place and not been hurt so badly. But so many of these people are swallowing the refuse of the cult. They can't see the fact the cult is tiny. You're in a cult, dude. Wake up. My favorite is when the establishment people are like, Trump supporters are in a cult. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, honestly, I don't care because I ain't got anything to do with those people. And they don't run Netflix. I mean, wouldn't it be insane if Netflix was actually just pumping out weird QAnon stuff all the time, constantly putting out documentaries where they're like, Trump is coming up, you know, going to be reinstated or some other nonsense. It'd be, it'd be like, this is weird. We just want to watch The Simpsons, dude. We just want to watch shows about werewolves and vampires or whatever. Kevin Spacey as a, as a young, attractive vampire political thriller, I guess. I don't know. People would, you know, actually, I'm joking, but if you gave me the option to watch teenage Kevin Spacey as a vampire, but he's actually an old man, but they like CGI him to be younger, and it's a political vampire thriller, I actually would, would be very interested to see that show, and I would turn it on, and I wouldn't turn on any of the woke trash that they've tried to make in the past few years. And also, shout out to Big Mouth, a disgusting show about children engaged in disgusting adult activities which for some reason Netflix is okay with. But hey, if Netflix is going to stop censoring things, that means garbage like cuties and Big Mouth will probably be on the platform. I don't know what to say about that. I'm not going to be signing up for Netflix anytime soon, and it's not because of Ricky Gervais. It's because they have Big Mouth and cuties. I find that to be like kind of gross. But let's throw it to our good friend Bill Maher. This is something that happened uh, last week, last Friday. Bill Maher, why are we giving puberty blockers to children? He says, so Bill Maher's definitely emceeing President DeSantis's first White House uh, uh, correspondence dinner, uh, WHCD, asked Patrick Ruffini after watching the clip from last night's real time. Bill Maher said, if this spike in trans children is all biological, why is it regional? Either Ohio is shaming them or California is creating them. Well, the left would probably just tell you that Ohio is shaming them, perhaps. But we are seeing it across the board. Bill Maher's actually a little bit wrong in that regard. In West Virginia, we got tons of trans kids. I think it has a lot to do with TikTok. I think TikTok is gutting the, the uh, disemboweling this country. But anyway, I'm not here to get into the trans issue. The real point here is Bill Maher and his politics, Netflix and their politics. And now you can see what's happening. Netflix purges the woke. They finally woken up to the fact that regular people do not like this. Bill Maher, who I think was trying to pander to both sides, he didn't want to go too far. He didn't know where the culture war was going to go. He's like, you ever see uh, uh, Dogma when Azrael was like, I was a muse. I had no place on the battleground. And then Sama Hayek's character is like, so was Elvis. But that didn't stop him from answering the call during a time of war. Anyway, my point is, that's Bill Maher. Bill Maher is like, oh, there's a culture war breaking out. The left has gone insane, but they butter my bread. I'm going to mostly pander to them and not go down this route. And then eventually started to realize it's hurting my ratings. So, Bill, new rule. Don't go woke for the sake of money. And perhaps you should learn to Google things. Bill. Bill Maher probably just consumes his media from outdated news sources like CNN, assuming it's true and not realizing they have been vomiting waste in, down his throat. But I think in reality... There's no way Bill Maher gets this much wrong unless he's like retired. It's like at work retirement, you know, Bill Maher stops doing his due diligence, stops doing research, stops reading the news and then just tell someone just just do it for me and we'll keep the show going. It's really, really gross when this happens. And you know, what? let me put it this way. I see people like Bill Maher and I think Bill Maher's retired. He's old. He's not consuming news anymore. He's getting his facts wrong. And he's probably just going like, I'm tired of this. I've been doing the same thing for 30 years. At a certain point, you want to take a break. But the money's too good. Why stop? So you hire some young person, say, tell me what to say, and I'll read the monologue, and you'll have my voice. No. Bill Maher, retire. Let a young person take over where you're at and do the jokes instead. Maybe they'll pay more attention. 
This is what's happening with politics. They don't want to actually do any of the work, but they don't want to leave because they're getting money and power. They never want to give it up, man. One thing I think about all the time with Timcast is how do we grow this to a point where there's other products, other shows, and uh, I'm gone. Now, I will say one of the issues is that the younger generation is, man, they're, they're being beaten over, they're being flogged over the head by the culture war. And it's hard to know where they'll end up. There's more conservative Gen Z than there are liberal because conservatives were having more kids. That's it. Now it's even more true today. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens in 20 years when conservatives are having seven kids and liberals are sterilizing their kids or aborting them. I think we're going to see conservatism be on the rise. That'll be fascinating unless they get to your kids, unless they go into the schools and indoctrinate your kids, which this is what they've been doing. The cult doesn't have children. They have yours. And if you aren't paying attention to what your kids are learning, you may have already lost them. My recommendation, if you live in one of these areas and you see this weird cult stuff affecting your children, you got to look to one of these stories, right? The stories talk about how when they went to the schools and complained, their kids were taken from them. When they said, I got to move for work. Thank you so much for your help. And then moved to a conservative community. Their kids went back to normal and their depression lifted. Give your kids a community. Give them a real community. This is why I think religion is so important. I am not religious. I am not, uh, I don't follow any theistic religion or anything like that. But I see the value in all of these, um, all of these, particularly Abrahamic religions. Now, personally, I always have to say this. I do believe in God. I just don't believe in human writings on these issues. But uh, so for some reason, a lot of people say I'm atheist, which I absolutely am not. But when it comes to Christianity, Judaism, um, is, uh, Islam, or any other organized religion where people gather, you have community. This is why I think Judaism is, is, is uh, so great. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how, how, probably how to explain it. But when they do Shabbat, when they go from Friday night, uh, Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown, where they, they, they eat together, they talk together, and they focus on their community, that is... That's a powerful thing that strengthens their bonds, gives them purpose and drive and leads them to success. Christians need to honor the Sabbath in the same way because they don't always, considering how large the religion is, a lot do. But you, you meet together with your community. You share ideas and bonds around common goals or ideas. I don't agree with all of the scripture stuff. What I agree with is having a place where you can meet and gather and share your thoughts with those who care about you and you care about, that's powerful. Your kids need that too. In the meantime, perhaps the change is coming. Perhaps the older generation is realizing get well, go broke is a, a truism. Perhaps these people will start to wake up to how much they've sacrificed and lost by pandering to the refuse of Twitter. Me? Thank you, Bill Maher. Because when you retreated from the space, I was able to occupy it. Now I can do segments speaking my mind because I've never deviated for what I've thought on equality uh, versus equity or anything like that. So I think the dawn is approaching. Things are getting better. People are waking up, be it Netflix or Bill Maher. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.